Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We got some 2022-23 Prism Basketball coming at you. Pick your team number six from Jaspi's Case. Pick your team four, still on the site, ladies and gentlemen. We'll do that tomorrow, but there's some spot stuff in the fill. I'm sure it'll be one of the first breaks of the day tomorrow, but first to fill, first to break. There are four boxes there, four boxes there. We're gonna see which four we're gonna do. Big thanks to Joe Locus grabbing the triple last spot mojo, grabbing all the teams. Uh, at the end right there. Okay, so we're gonna roll the die. One, two, three for the left four, and then four, five, six for the right four box, right? So you see the X's I marked on there so you know that they are all from the same case. It's gonna be two. One, two, three, four, five, six is right over here. So now this will be for break number four. All right, and I think we have one more case after the, these final four boxes. We can load up another three pick your teams. And then we can work on some more four box breaks tomorrow as well. A lot of value in here. I feel like we've been talking about this draft class throughout the season, throughout the regular season, and a lot of great ball players. Potential, some potential greats maybe? That, that's TBD. But I think a lot, a lot to be, uh, a lot of players to be excited about. Now, I always try to remind people, listen, think about how many years it took for, just because, you know, a lot of these kids are one and done. So what are they, how old are they, 19, 18, 19, 20 years old coming out of college? They, they, they can't even buy a beer at their own arena legally. You know, so you think about how long... Even some of the some of the now older players, like how long did it take Kevin Durant? He only played like a year in college, right? How long did it take him to go to his first final? How long did it take Steph Curry to go to his first final? You know, you can go down the list of how many players who even though had good rookie years and were setting records here and there and going off, how many years it takes them to actually get to a level where they're finally understanding NBA defenses in addition to their own offensive prowess. How do, how do they unlock NBA defenses, which are far more complex? I know there's a joke in God, NBA plays defense, but, you know, for what it's worth, they still do. <laughs> you know, but to unlock that, to know what defenses or know what coverages and teams are, what teams are doing to try to stop you, you know, then that unlocks another part of your game, and you know that's where you see where the next elite level is going to be. You know, that's where you start seeing year five, year six, year seven. You know, is where you start seeing stuff like that. There's one Jalen Williams, the Arkansas Jalen Williams, who had a nice night tonight. Also, yeah, rookie parallels. Let's leave those. Who knows? Johnny Davis is going to end up being a somebody. Red Wave for Jason and the Wizards. Someone else going to ask her, do you think Curry retires a warrior? I would think so. This is Vince Williams Jr. I can't imagine. I feel like even at the player of his caliber, I feel like I don't think his contract is too crazy <laughs> compared to some other players in the league. I'm sure he gets paid very handsomely, but... I think it's not like a albatross of a contract, right? I think his, yeah, he's not going anywhere, right, Joe Pizzle? I think his style of play, he could, even when his speed goes away, he can still spot up, shoot a three. So even in, in his older years, I think he's going to be, uh, he, he still can be an effective player. But more importantly, here's the other Jalen. This is Santa Clara Jalen Williams. 
But more importantly, he's such an icon. Like he's like a pop culture icon. He's beloved. He's a beloved player for Golden State Warriors fans. So they're never, they're never going to trade him. I think he loves it there. And he's in a new arena, so it's not like he's going to go anywhere. You know, I don't think he's going to... He doesn't have to go hunting for rings, right? He's not going to be a golem and be a ring hunter. You know? So he's not like he's going to leave to go hunt for, for rings, which is a lot, a lot of times what sort of loyal superstars will do towards the end of their career. Like, I, for example, I could see... Damian Lillard in the last like three or four years of his career, even though he loves Portland, I think I could see him saying, hey, I want to go try to chase a ring before all is said and done. I could see him doing that. But Steph Curry also won so many rings with, with the Warriors. And he's such an icon and beloved by the team, beloved by ownership, you know, and is, is like a legacy player. And it's pretty much like, you know, with... Were the Lakers really ever going to let Kobe walk and sign with another team? There are moments where it almost looked like that, but at the end of the day, it's like he's one of those unique players that would, you know, that you got to lock up for life. Remember, Warriors history was, was not very sparkly before, before the Splash Brothers. There were some moments, but... Steph and, and the rest really created a dynasty there. There's uh, Oshai Ag Agbaji for David B. and the, and the Jazz. There's Jason Preston for the Clippers. Joe Locus. So, yeah. She's asking at some point if he'd want to go somewhere else. I don't know why he would, but... Well, yeah, you got to think about, why, like I was mentioning before, why do players end up leaving their teams? Usually it's A, money. They're not happy with what they're being paid. And I think Steph Curry has probably earned himself the right to keep signing deals with the Warriors until he wants to retire. B, people want to go somewhere else because uh, they want to win chips. They're ring chasing. They're golems. But he has rings. He doesn't need that. As opposed, what's, the, what's the other reason? Why, why do players uh, go back home? There's the, hey, I'm old and my, my family lives here in the off season and I want to be closer to home for, for most of my working season, you know? I think Steph Curry, I think I think his family live in like San Francisco, right? I think that's home for them. So I don't think they're going to I think they're going to go See where where is he from? North Carolina? I guess he was born in Ohio, but he went he grew up in Charlotte, right? That's right, yeah, he grew up in Charlotte, yeah, North Carolina. But, I mean, what tie, I mean, I guess his dad played there, right? So, I could see that. I could see, like, the very last year of Steph's career. <laughs> you know, how old is Steph? He's 35. I could see, like, if he, I could see, like, 40-year-old Steph Curry say, sure, I'll play, uh, you know, I'll play 15 minutes a night, put up five threes a game, you know, on like a bum ankle or two, and put on the jersey my dad wore. So yeah, I take that back, Rex. I, I, could, I could see, I could see, I, it's unlikely, but I could see him do like a year in Charlotte at 40 years old. Steph Curry? Oh yeah. If the trash is already full, maybe we should just leave it. Like, oh, is it? Yeah, like when what? I opened it, it's like it's like yeah, we should boxes just, are covering basically. We should just leave it. Okay. Oh, they're they're picked up tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's what's so Thursday pickup. So up. hopefully, yeah. yeah. Last so week I, they didn't pick up. Though. I mean, just food trash probably. We should put it in the dumpster, okay. but but otherwise, regular trash we'll just leave out here. I have not
Zelda's color commentary for the horn. Oh, so yeah. If I'll bet Steph Curry will do it if they if they if the Hornets at one point sign Seth Curry, his brother, and Steph is like 39, 40 years old, and if Dell's still doing color commentary, I'll bet he. I I think he'd sign a year a one year deal at age 40 or something like that to do it. So he signed through his age 37 season, 2025-26. And then he's an unrestricted free agent again. There's Jonas Valanciunas to 199. And there's Blake Wesley for the Spurs. Oliver, were you saying he had a decent season this year? That's going to go to David H. San Antonio. So 2026, he's an unrestricted free agent. My guess is he probably signs like another one-year deal with the, horn, with the Horns. The one-year deal with the Warriors or something like that depending on how, how they end the season. How they end his age 37 season. Maybe another one or two year deal. And then maybe he, yeah, then maybe he knocks out a year in Charlotte just for, just for S's and G's. Yes, Sal, this is the last break of the night. We are already over and I think we're gonna Probably finish around a little bit past the bottom of the hour. It's Devin Booker to 99. Joe P is, uh, if you're still listening, Pizzle, is... Is Devin Booker going anywhere? No, I think he just signed a big deal, right? Yeah, he's signed... Oh, yeah, he signed an extension, right? Yeah, he did. He signed through his age 30 season. He signed another four-year deal. He's got one more year left. They added another four, paying him $50 million a year, $56 million a year on average. And then he's a free agent at 31. I'd be shocked if they don't sign, sign another three or tack another three or four years onto that before he goes anywhere. This Clint Capella to 125. Would the Lakers take a 31-year-old Devin Booker? Probably. All right, see you guys. If Joe Pizzle's listening, he's unable to type because he's puking in his own mouth thinking about Devin Booker in, in Lakers colors. <laughs> That's kind of what the Lakers do. They, well, they, they just their mo is, has rarely been built through the draft. Only two times have, have they actually really done that. And both times it was probably it was just out of sheer luck. All right, they happened to be around in the '80s when Magic Johnson was <laughs> was coming out of college, and then I think they got gifted. I mean, I guess at the time, no one really thought Kobe Bryant was going to end up being who he was. I think the, the, the signing of a kid out of high school was just unheard of. Behind Kelly Aubrey Jr. is Vando, Jerry, Jared Vanderbilt. What a great addition to the Lakers. This is still going to the Jazz, David B. with that one. Big fan of him. A lot of energy off the bench. Always going for the boards. A coach favorite. There's Usmani Dieng to 149 for OKC. And a hyper Luka Doncic. <laughs> Vanderbilt's, I feel like Vanderbilt's one of the guys that coaches will be like, I wish we had five Jared Vanderbilt's out there on the court.
There's a Jaden Hardy Silver for Dallas. That's going to be for Jake Joe Dallas. All right, halfway through this four box break. Another two to go. This is an exciting point of the evening for you guys because you're gonna listen to me talk about my fantasy baseball team. There's nothing more exciting than listening to someone talk about their own fantasy baseball team. Uh, got Logan O'Hop, went one for four. Torgelson went over. for Jeff Mendeal, stolen base three walks. All right, I'll take that. Steer on just, ah, oh, Trey Turner, two for five with a steal, good. I need more steals out of, out of him. Ben Intendi, one for four. Brandon Marsh, one for four with an RBI. Altman, two for... Out, out, James Altman, two for five. And an RBI. And a cot stealing, trying to, trying to, trying to run, too. Giancarlo Stanton, one for four. What's Emmanuel Classe with another loss? I feel like that's his second blown save. I don't like that. Dylan Floro with a couple strikeouts. Who would I leave on the bench? Left Brandon Nemo on the bench. He went three for five with a double and two RBIs. I need that average. How's everyone else's fantasy team doing? Are there any... I guess everyone knows all the players who are good, who are like chalk, but who are your like sort of sleeper players that you drafted that you, uh, that you are seeing some good results? Or the sort of long shots you were counting on. I took a gamble on um, on Altman, obviously. I don't think Brandon Marsh was too highly sought after in fantasy baseball. But I feel like he's having a good season. I feel like he had a decent season with the Phillies last year. I think he was going to get some regular starts. For like 10 or 12 team leagues, maybe 12 team leagues, maybe even 10 team leagues, might, might be getting to that point, um, where uh, James Out could be a great like sort of fourth outfielder, fourth or fifth outfielder. You know, oh, there's Pau Gasol. You know, someone asked, I think it was Chad, is it Chad Coleman the other day? Cromwell the other day, one of the chads was asking me who's, who one of my favorite players are. And I, my general answer is I root for the front of the jersey, not the back of the jersey, but I was re-watching the Pau Gasol jersey retirement ceremony, and I kind of forgot how much I like Pau Gasol. I think he got a little, a little flack towards the end of his run because he wasn't like, you know, he wasn't like, he played differently than Shaq, but he wasn't Shaq, you know what I mean? And Shaq's such a big personality and, and everything. But I think he got a lot of crap for that. You know, there were some like Pau Gasoft kind of, kind of slander being thrown around and blah, 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 blah. But, no, but I think Jersey was well well worth being retired and such a good dude. I honestly did not know, or even and if I did, I forgot it. That uh, here's Wendell Moore Jr. for Minnesota Wenshin. That Paul Gasol at one point was on med school track in Spain. Um, before he switched to studying, studying the game of basketball full time. But apparently he's very active, I think in LA Children's Hospital. Pretty sure this local Children's Hospital, super active. I think, I think he, he goes once or twice a year just to check in, say hi, donate some stuff, spend some time there, blah, 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 blah. 
and there was there was a doctor being interviewed in this in this Lakers network interview that I was watching where the doctor was like, yeah, he was just, you know, like you normally do with celebrities or athletes, you know, you're just showing what's going on. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at a random study or MRI or something that we're working on or some treatment that we're working on. And usually, you know, you get smiles and nods and hey, good work, blah, blah, blah. But the doctor was like, well, yeah. And then Powell asked me a kind of an advanced medical question. And he's like, and he thought, oh, okay, kind of knows his stuff. And then he kept asking more and more advanced questions. And this doctor was like, wait a second, come on, what's going on here? And Powell had revealed to him, hey, I went to medical school. I was like a med student. I was on track to be a doctor before this basketball thing came along. There's Lonzo to 149 and Kelly Olenek. David B. with the Jazz. Can you imagine Powell, if, it, if it was just Dr. Gasol, Dr. Powell Gasol in Spain, And there was just like, if there were like, what, basketball pickup games going on? I mean, he would just be destroying, you know, the, the other hospital down the way. You know, he'd be, he'd be playing the, uh, here's Lonzo right here. It's a 149 for the Bulls. Nicholas. You know. Ba Barcelona Medical would be playing, uh, would be playing, you know, Madrid, a little intramural basketball between some hospitals, just be destroying them. There's Benedict Mathurian. I saw that, Rex. Jordan Walker, on base machine. What's the streak there? What's the what's the most hits in a row to start a season? Is it to start a season? Did Paul Paul live near Redondo? For, where does he live now? Is he live, is he back in Spain? Do you still live around here? And so that got me thinking. If there is like one player that, you know, because again, I, I, don't, I, I tend not to root for individuals themselves. I've never been, you know, I'm not buying a guy's jersey or anything. I'm, I'm not really a jersey guy, buy a jersey guy, but. There's one person that I really like, really one athlete that I'm a, a favorite of. That would be a uh, Pau Gasol. I think would be up there on on the list. Wow, his 12 hit streak was tying in a 111 year old record. Mad Joe. Yes, what about Bo Jackson? Oh, as favorite athlete, I see. might have a forearm flexor strain, ladies and gentlemen. My right arm, I might be on the IL. Seth Curry behind him is Wendell Moore Jr. Rookie auto for the Timberwolves, Wen Shun. I know, I, I gotta call Michael. Got to get him to say, "Hey, buddy, just you might get a you might get a start tomorrow." Joe's gonna do a bullpen session in the morning. You know, just just see how it feels. But you just be ready if we need you to make a little spot start. Got a Paolo Banchero for Orlando, Daniel. Ed P, by the way, has Pau Gasol autograph. That, sorry, I went off on that Lakers story, Pau Gasol story. Forgot to let you know that that is officially yours. There's Chris Middleton to 125.
Now, I feel like that happens, that happens every time he goes on air. It's disrespectful to, to Michael. Chris Middleton for the Bucks. It's for Sean. There's uh, Cody Martin to 299 for Charlotte. That'll be for Brian. Exactly, all. Yeah, it's 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 annoying. You know, because it's like, hey, I'm my own person. You know, you've just re reduced my existence to like some popular figure. Thanks. <laughs> Paul George reveals a Christian Wood. What are the Mavs going to do? They got Luka Doncic. They got Kyrie Irving. They got, they got, you know, Mark Cuban. What are they going to do? Miss the playoffs? Traded away the defense? What are they going to do? I don't know. There's been some conversation around the shop between me and Chris Jaspi. Chris Jaspi saying, is, is Mark Cuban just one Dirk Nowitzki championship and one lucky draft getting Luka Doncic away from just being a bad owner? I feel like he gets a lot of credit for being like, oh, you know, we're going to fly on private jets and we got, you know, free sodas in the soda machine or I don't know what they do. All, all sorts of, all sorts of, sorts of like tech startup type of perks, right? There's Brooke Lopez at 25. But I don't know. Any questions are out there. And there are worse owners. But maybe that question doesn't get asked enough. That's going to be a great series. Dylan Brooks, Desmond Bain, and my Lakers. Woo! I think that series starts on Sunday, and I work Sundays. So we'll, we'll most likely be watching the game together. There you go, gang. Pick your team six in the books. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. Nice little uh, easily done four box breaks. I, I like this format, you know, kind of kind of keeps the price of your team sort of split up a little bit. So, you know, it's a, it's a pricey product. Prison basketball usually is, but I appreciate everybody getting into it. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.